Mon nom est Christophe Dorance, euh, je suis l'un des trois réalisateurs du film Necronomicon et par politesse euh, nous allons parler avec euh, Brian Yuzna qui est producteur du film et également réalisateur de l'un des trois segments en, en anglais. Thank you. It's very polite. I'm Brian Yuzna and I was one of the co-conspirators of this um, of this film along with Christoph and Samuel Hadida yeah. and Take Chise and um, a lot of others. Well, I really liked this title treatment. I thought that was gave it a very kind of kind of um, strong look. We tried we tried like hell to come up with a um, great title sequence, and um, finally ended up not having one. But this was actually I think this is great. The library for the um, for the 1930s um, Arkham, Massachusetts, or. Providence is um, actually a mausoleum. It's yeah, a cemetery yeah. in, in downtown Los Angeles. It's in. It's yeah. actually in Compton. It was a very dangerous area. Yeah, very dangerous area. Especially after the uh -huh. riot. And this was <laughs> my great. This was the last thing we shot, and I had to try to drive that Model A Ford and yeah. take off my glasses and put fake ones on, and everybody made great fun of me. Yeah. It's true that for you not play, being you play the driver, to, right? You play the cab uh -huh. driver. And I love Jeffrey Combs in this, playing H.P. Lovecraft, because we gave him a new chin and a new nose. Yeah, very, I, it's very good makeup. Very good. Very good. Makeup. And I think this is great because behind all those fake books are actually dead bodies, and it yeah. smelled like death in there. You know, it's funny because recently I saw a movie shot by Jerry Lively the same DP uh -huh. than you have on this film and it was shot exactly in the same place oh, you yeah. know, the oh, movie really? is called uh, Soul Keeper you know? Soul Keeper yeah, yeah. Well, they also and this library is, uh, seems like a good location for small budget or this or mausoleum film. yes exactly uh -huh. but they also they shot I think Phantasm 4 or something in this place too it's Tony Azito the um, strange cult um Keeper of the Keys. What I really like about this part of it, I really like the, the wraparound because it reminds me of an old radio drama, an old radio show, like The Shadow or The Whistler. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why, exactly. but it gives me this yeah, feeling completely. Yeah. The Maybe also because it. it's a period piece, you know? It's period, and it's kind of the pace of telling the story and yeah. the style of the acting. It all just reminds yeah. me of listening to those yeah. those old shows. One of the strange uh, things into the film is that the action uh, take place in different uh, period, yeah, and the, biz the most bizarre thing is that the wraparound set before <laughs> some, the of other the <laughs> some of the period uh -huh. described into the second and third segment. Uh -huh. so but I think that's perfect bizarre. because the Book of the Dead can do anything. <laughs> yeah, so it's <laughs> also a science fiction movie, right? It is not all one, right? <laughs> But it's amazing how Jeffrey Combs, we gave him, we actually gave him the nose and chin of H.P. Lovecraft yeah. based on a photograph yeah. of H.P. Lovecraft. And what's really amazing is, is how much it changed him. It really took away the Herbert West, yeah. which was the big, my big yeah. fear was that he would look like Herbert West. Yeah. And instead he completely Who made the makeup that. yet? That was Screaming Mad George Screaming did the Mad makeup George. on his. Makeup. Yeah, did a great job. Amazing. And I think there was a sequence here that we cut out of the movie, one of many, many. Oh. Because the head was supposed to, he was yeah. supposed to turn in two directions at once yeah. to show us that they were very strange people. Yeah. Now here we've come yeah. onto the stage. After, when he goes up to the door, we're on the stage. And the reason he's so tight is because there's nothing on either side of the door. I, I remember. <laughs> it's such a small I remember set. set. <laughs> And now we're into uh, Tony Tremblay's um, set. It's a very, very small set with a very, very wide lens. Yeah. And it was built so that it could roll, yeah. except we never got to roll it. And also you, you build it on because you wanted some water. Yeah. And there's a crate mm -hmm. that you can see on the floor. Right. I remember very well this set. It's strange safe and safe, yes, with many, many different doors. Uh -huh. I, I, I give the idea of different door with each one uh, with a different uh, esoteric sign. Uh -huh. This is typical Jeffrey Combs acting. What I like in the process of this film that everybody was giving Heidi's. 
you remember yeah. mm -hmm. you know it's a, it, it we were not uh, separated you know we right. were you know on the same set giving right. some ideas well this oh, was we, the... maybe we can do that oh yes yes okay <laughs> let's do that that was funny yeah well that was really incredible too was that the um, was that we were shooting all of these sometimes almost we were building one set while we we're shooting the other but oh, not yeah, even in a different way. room it was all in the same room yeah and and you have to stop when people were, were right. shooting a, I remember, yeah. a shot, sometimes our actress to, started to bang screaming. on the set. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The book, also designed by Tony Tremblay. Tony and Tremblay was one. the guy who designed uh, Sam Remy Army of Darkness. Yeah, uh, we have to say yeah. it. And I think he did a great job on yeah. this. He's got a great. He's got a great sense of what is the minimum you need to yeah. make it work. Oh. He knows what you can see through the lens and and what's needed. And I don't know where these signs came from. <laughs> I, I, Strange. I told symbols. you I gave the idea. Oh. <laughs> Okay, now we enter into my now segment. Now we go into the the drowned, which was actually based on Dagon, I think. No, 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 no. The, you, the, gave the the, the, you gave the, me the the, uh, the idea to do um, the story from Rats in the Walls. Oh right, Rats but in I the Walls. But I completely changed, changed everything. Oh right, because at first we were doing yeah. Rats in the Walls. We yeah. had a whole script for Rats in yeah, the Walls. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah. I didn't like it, and I mm -hmm. decided to make much more like an homage to. Uh, this is this is definitely to Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, old well, series uh, by Oji Corman. Yeah, this is Corman Bava territory, and even Belinda Bauer acts just Not like uh, the Pit and the problem. Pendulum. Exactly. And this and this peak where the where the miniature by your your best friend David Sharp, David Sharp. is um, is in the same peak where they put the Pit and the Pendulum. Yeah, house. but on the other side. Yeah. and you know, same peak uh, that we can see also at the beginning of Tales of Terror. Yeah. You know. Yeah, Tales same of Cliff. Terror. They use the yeah. same thing all the time. And this is great. This is a great set. And had many different versions of this as well. Mm. Bruce Payne, Belinda Bauer. Bruce Payne, I saw, I saw him in two Passenger 57. He was very good in the part of the terrorist. Uh, oh, that's a forced perspective. Uh, yeah, what I really love about your episode is that uh, s just one shot after another is a um, is a special shot. Is a it, it's like the night of the hunter or something. There's so many forced perspective, mix of miniatures. Everything's at almost a trick. Yeah, you know, I I, I really wanted to to make an an old fashioned uh, horror film mm -hmm. and something very classy. I didn't want to go right on the gore ground. You know, mm -hmm. I like gore, but but mm -hmm. I wanted something much more classy. Maybe because I'm a cinephile and and I was coming to America to make my very first movie and I was full of of nostalgia about about the genre and mm -hmm. it's why you know I decide to make uh, something much more on the Edgar Allan Poe side mm -hmm. than maybe on the Lovecraft side. Right. Right. But you know, I, I read a book about uh, about the influence of Edgar Allan Poe on the Lovecraft work, mm -hmm. and I tried to use, uh, you know, some some of, of, of uh, this very clear influence on each other. For me also the problem with Lovecraft is that Lovecraft doesn't like uh, female characters. No, there are none. No, there was, no you have uh, to invent never. the female. And I wanted female character. I wanted something romantic with three female characters, basically, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the film. And uh, it's why, you know, I, I put the film on the, on the Poe side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was very clear. I like Belinda Bauer. Yeah, she's, she does she's a great gorgeous, job. Absolutely gorgeous. She's such a nice woman, and she's so elegant. You came here with your clerk. It's funny because I, 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 you know, in my two next movie, I mean, uh, Crying Freeman and and Le Pacte de Lou, I, I, may I, I choose, I pick the same type of woman with uh, Yoko Shimada playing uh, the Lady Anada in Frank Freeman mm -hmm. and Monica Bellucci in Le Pacte de Loup, you know. Mm -hmm. I have, I like this type of woman, very dark uh, and, and vamp. It's very old fashioned. That's my favorite shot of, of my segment. The shot where Belinda is telling the story you can about hear the cave. Under the, yeah. Yeah. That's very Hitchcockian, mm -hmm. you know, the little track along the face of the girl. That's beautiful. I like that. 
undercurrent of um, sexual tension. Oh yeah. You can look. I spend my time to sh to shoot at her high heels. Uh -huh. shoes. <laughs> I know that shot went on forever. <laughs> and you like that? You like you like when I suggest that uh, she had some sex with oh, her yeah. assistant I just, on the bed in mm -hmm. the haunted house. I think it's great, <laughs> and I like her performance. I oh didn't, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think much of it while she was doing it, and until it was cut together, and I went and told her. I said, you know, I didn't even know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it all put together, I thought, mm, very nice, very nice performance. And this is very Corman right here. Oh, yeah. See the picture. It's a portrait of Denise Lewis. Beautiful, beautiful girl. Drowned in a shipwreck. All the gossip about the hotel. Originally in the first script, you know, it was an old, fat guy. Oh, that was showing her around. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I decided that it was much more interesting right. to have a beautiful girl. Yeah. I remember you know. seeing the um, the storyboards for it. He yeah. was very disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was like like a fat version uh -huh. of Donald Pleasance, you know. And uh, But, you know, that's that's an old trick, you know. If, if you if you are not very sure about the sequence, put a, put a beautiful, beautiful woman in it. inside it and, yeah. and you will see you. It will be much more interesting immediately. Yeah, this was a very complicated sequence at one time. Yeah, Pullman process. Of course, it was too expensive to break this car. That's a miniature. Yeah. So but look at you can even see under there that yeah. there's no there's no miniature underneath the car. It's yeah. just two little tubes. And here was Bruce Payne who who came onto the set with for you and then told you when you got there that he couldn't get his hair wet even though in the script he was supposed to dive underwater to save the girl. Yeah. Just, oh, this is really weird, disgusting. Weird yeah. stuff. This is this is the way the guy that was supp was exactly. supposed to look that showed the yeah, house. Yeah, and I, this is terrible. This looks like the nameless or something. Yeah, you know this morgue. Stuff. This morgue came from an old Japanese movie uh, named The Inferno. So, you know, and this this old Japanese was describing the hell according to Buddhist uh, mm -hmm. you know religion. And I took this idea of a morgue where, uh, in fact, people are in, onto a, a big... Uh, Just floating around. Floating, yeah, into the formal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really disgusting. I don't know if people understand very well what I'm showing. Uh, you know, sometimes, I'm, you know, m my movie look like much more a nightmare without any logic than something, you know, com think, well, you know especially this morgue, you know. I don't, I don't yeah. know if people say, oh, that's a morgue. People say, what, that? <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> you know, but you know, we are into maybe. an horror movie, well, so we yeah. don't care. You know? <laughs> and it's a flashback, and it's yeah. in black and white, so yes. you accept a lot. Say, What's that? This is fake night. And now this is a great shot here, I oh, think. Oh, it's a shot where I close the, the door. It was yeah. played by, uh, by a little kid, yeah, yeah. this one. Yeah. And that's great. That's yeah. a little boy, because you wanted the door to be much bigger. Yeah. And it looks great. Really, uh, really a cool look. And what what is funny is that the set was not so high, so each time you look at the ceiling, it's it's a it's a miniature mm -hmm. all the time. I like miniature. Yeah, sometimes it looks more real than than real, mm. especially when you play with the light on it. Mm -hmm. I think it's because you can control it so much. Since by tonight I shall be no. And now we go into the getting to the Second Richard Lynch. You know, yeah, the Richard Lynch. Yeah, that's, that's a real motif in my work. Flashback on Within flashback into flashback. If I can't find redemption, at least there'll be oblivion. Oh, that's 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 an interesting shot. Yeah, you, did, you did a great job on that shot. <laughs> It's a stock shot. It's a stock shot it's that we ten tainted, and uh, that's an old uh, stock shot from the Mayflower uh, in a Spencer Tracy movie named Captain Courage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a, that's also a motif in your work because in Crying Freeman we also have a stock shot of an airplane. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I like your stock shot. The guy who, who cry, who, who, who scream, he's alive, he's alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I saw him again into uh, The 13 Warriors by John McTiernan, the Viking uh -huh. movie. He plays the, the 
Viking leader. Vladimir yeah, Kulich. He's amazing. He's alive! He's alive! <laughs> he has a, such a great voice, you know? Yeah. And I was very happy to see him in 2013 Warrior. He's great. I love Richard Lynch. Richard Lynch. This guy has, has a lion face. Look at, look at his mm -hmm. face. You know, he's great. And he's such a nice, nice man, you know. Such a nice man. I like him. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, what I like is was playing on the first degree. Very, you know, there is no irony in no, no, his no, way no, to play. That's away. great. That's pure genre. Mm -hmm. Look at him. Why? It's like a Shakespeare yeah. <laughs> stage play. <laughs> so, Suddenly, you know, he's yeah, screaming no to back. the sky, you know. I like that. That's, that's my real mm -hmm. insp European inspiration. You know, that's very Bava shot, you know, of the young boy, young boy lying boy. on the table in, in, in black laces. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I like that. Beautiful Denise Lewis. Beautiful corpse. Now, this is very un-Lovecraft here. Oh, yeah. Because Lovecraft wouldn't think that burning a Bible would have anything to do with anything. He considers that it would just be another book to burn. I betray this is more Lovecraft here. in each shot. In yeah. <laughs> this is more Edgar Allan Poe. There. Oh, yeah. I like this shot. He's like an angel. You know, the light through his white shirt make him like wings oh my. look at his face amazing face is no longer welcome in my house I have something against a religion you know yeah. you saw the back to the room you know? yeah. it's a bad guy, he's a priest uh -huh. <laughs> that comeback <laughs> you know, that's, that's a comeback to my very roots inspiration I love, I love the shot shot of his bloody hand you know, caressing the long hair mm -hmm. of the dead girl that's gothic uh -huh. Lisa and the devils <laughs> That's true. It looked like a design of the devil. That's true. This is um, this is a a first version of the um, creatures, I think, in Shadow over Innsmouth. Oh, these are the. I was um, thinking very hard. This is the love. This yeah. is the Lovecraft. Um, that you did with Dagon yeah, recently. A whole different Stragon. version, right? And you took some 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 shot from my uh, segment, you know, especially the tentacle coming out yeah. of the mouth that we are going yeah, to see in, uh, but, in but, the next scene. But not as well done. This is a great character here. And it looked really ridiculous without the lighting. When I saw that, <laughs> when I, saw that I said, oh, no. Yes. I said, this is, this is a disaster. Oh, yeah. And Tom Savini was doing magic tricks, and I was uh, saying, Tom, what, what? <laughs> But, with the but light. it looks great. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. I think this is the only segment that actually uses the book as a central, mm. as a central um, plot point. Yeah. Yeah. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. That's a great. That, that's a great um, theme, I think, by Joe Laduca. You know, he I really did, gave yeah. a theme that you could, you just could always remember. Yeah. All the shots are moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was made on the shoestring, but I was using the crane as much as possible. Right. I remember. Right. I, I was a crane. I and I remember crane. that that when you were shooting, you were, um, <laughs> you would forget to call cut. Yeah. And, yeah, that's true. and um, the first AD would be sitting there and the shot would end and he would look over to me and he'd be moving with his hands and I'd say, we can't cut until Christoph says cut and he'd be trying to get me to, to touch you or to do something because the camera, and you'd be watching the shot and it'd be rolling and the camera would be rolling and the crew would be looking and you'd be <laughs> completely engrossed in the shot and finally you'd go, Oh, uh, cut. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was, I was everybody. Amazed. You know, each seconds, each seconds, I was amazed to be there in California <laughs> shooting a gothic movie into an hangar. You know, it's, it was kind of a dream coming true. You know, and uh, oh, this, the, sh the shot of uh, of the guy reflecting into the blood pool is come from uh, Profondo Rosso. Mm. You know, by Dario Argento. That's a direct, clear homage. This is great. I think this is real occult stuff. That's Baba now. You have plenty of green light suddenly, and you have a young boy in black. Oh, that's a shot that I like. The shot of the two feet of mm -hmm. the dead girl, you know. That's very morbid, very necrophilic. Look at that. Her face hidden. Yeah. I think I was in love with uh, Denise Lewis. I must confess that. I was completely uh, fascinated by her beauty. <laughs> the fog! <laughs> oh, look the at fog. that, you know. And I, you know, when I did the, the boy opening his eyes, you know, with green light into it, I was thinking to the village of the damned. All oh, right. You know, <laughs> That, oh yeah, that was actually my son there in that second. That was the insert unit, and those were that was real stuff. That was very. I remember when disgusting I, yeah. stuff that because stank. I was using real. It was all real. Real squid. Yeah, it was just awful. Awful. But a, this is great here. It's yeah. a fake, fake head, but yeah. it really works great to have an actual, oh. to have an actual squid. Yeah. I mean, an octopus. Octopus, Pulpo. a real one. You remember the, the smell on, oh, on the it's set? Just awful. And you remember that some technician were didn't want to play with dead animals and yeah. they left the, the set because mm -hmm. I was using real squid yeah. you know? and also what, you know, what I did with weird stuff of the, the boy speaking with the squid into his mouth mm -hmm. you, tell me, you told me oh you're going to be the cover of Fangoria yeah, yeah. <laughs> it didn't happen but you, you told me that <laughs> What did they use for the cover? They must have used one of them, one of the uh, images. I'm trying to remember. Uh, history repeats itself. Yeah. That's also a motif from the Garland Poe. Mm -hmm. The guy who repeats the yeah. same well, problem it, than his own ancestors. Because it's in, it's in you your know. genes, and yeah. that's also what Lovecraft did with Shadow over Innsmouth. There's mm. this feeling that that destiny is in your is in your genes. It's in the mm -hmm. blood. Mm -hmm. Your destiny can't be can't be avoided. I like I like Bruce Payne. He's, he's moving like Errol Flynn. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very classy in his movement. And when when I was directing him, you know, I, I was directing him like a, a tango dancer. You know, you mm -hmm. can see it. You know, he's moving very well, and is and he loved that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember his girlfriend was on the set and she was, oh, my, my guy's handsome, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> she was all love for him, you know? <laughs> That's a nice, nice man, Bruce Payne. Yeah. I like this Dutch this angle on the, on the strange green smoke right. coming from under the bed. I think it's... Now today these tentacles would probably be be, be done um, CG, CG, and they would look terrible. <laughs> That's true. They would look bad. This is backwards, the reverse, with the smoke. Oh, you can see that the smoke is not going in, in the right way. <laughs> uh oh. Strange dream. Little Enigma. Oh, I, have, I have a special production story about this um, high angle shot on him opening the portrait. You know, it's high angle because Gary Schmoller, the line producer, was thinking of all the furniture oh, right. from <laughs> the bedroom. 
while as you're I was shooting, shooting right. you know, <laughs> this guy was taking off the bed and everything <laughs> while I was shooting because he didn't want that I should Take walk into more, right. on this set. That's amazing. You so I made this high angle. There is no more furniture in the, on the set at that moment. Well, there's a certain type of um, production manager or line producer that feel like if they could just get rid of the director, yeah. the movie could be made properly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's but it's a uh, it's very common. Huh? I think it's very common in America. In in France, nobody will do that. Oh, know? I've run into that in in Spain. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> I think it's it's people play the role they give them. You get the role and then you play it. You yeah. know, and they give them the role of you have to control the production, and the next thing you know, they take it to absurd str extremes, and they forget that um, sometimes everything can't be reduced to a to a a line on a budget. Mm. That sequence of the dead girl coming Maria Ford. from the dead there? to tempt the hero come from right from the Japanese ghost story named Kaiden. It's uh, a segment called the Snow Lady. It comes from there. Kaiden is one of my greatest influence on my work, especially the use of the color and the light. And of course, some romantic theme about uh, strange love between alive and dead people. Maria Ford was really a, a weird, strange girl. She is uh, odd, isn't she? She was a stripper. Yeah? Yeah. But with such a strange but personality. But where did you see her? Well, how did you know No, 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 her? I where? cast her. But she was weird. Did you know and, who and she was before? No, I, 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 saw I saw her in many striptease movie. <laughs> oh, striptease movies. Yeah, right. but she, she has a real strange personality. She, I think that she believes into magic and invisible things. You know. She's very poetic in a sense, you know. Nice person. She's moving like a dancer, I can see that. I ask her to move like a dancer. And she was doing that very well. I remember on, on the set I was saying, okay, you're like a spider and he's like a fly. <laughs> and <laughs> you're going to like hit him. So you come very slowly. Well, this is the him. most disgusting shot in your segment right here. Oh, yeah, my, my, my Cthulhu <laughs> Felacio <laughs> shot. <you know? laughs> Lovecraft, Lovecraftian Felacio. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Everybody expects uh -huh. some interesting oral work and suddenly something happened very very weird uh -oh. and this is a backward shot which really works Yuck. well and this shot was done also with a, a real squid yeah yeah but i think what's great is that um is that the animation is so much better just by going backwards mm. than you can make either with a puppet or with a cg animation or there's something very that really looks like it's coming yeah, out but, and grabbing but remember it was it was before the digital effects oh, and I we know. were always under the influence of the thing by John Carpenter mm -hmm. where Rob Bottin was using a lot this river shot yeah. to make some some of his uh, mechanical but see I still think that alive. stuff works so much better because when I see the CG stuff today I just go wow it's not going to be very long before we look back mm. and these movies are going to be so dated because it's just going to look so... It looks like animation in the middle of a movie. Yeah. That's weird. I can explain what and this is a pretty, <laughs> But this is actually a pretty good use of the, um, of the CG here. Yeah. Shh. Because it just does the job. At one time, there was a complete story under the the hotel mm. of tunnels and zombies and fighting which Sammy kept trying to get us to do and get us to do and finally you said no nope, we can't do it it's over 
in yeah, 10 days, forget that's, it. <laughs> that's true that you, yeah, that's true. You, you recall me that at one moment we decided maybe to, to make a bigger segment of mine. Yeah. And yeah. I wanted to, to, to make something like a, 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 a horrific Moby Dick because mm -hmm. the guy will come back into the house to, to kill Cthulhu. Mm -hmm. There was a big monster under right. the, the floor and he will use some people who used to catch whales. That was the idea, you know. <laughs> that was crazy. I always tell everybody, I, I always tell everybody, I said, you know, there's different types of producers you can work with. And there's one type that's very common that tell you, it's like Gary Schmuller taking this furniture away. Exactly. They say, you know what? The money comes to here. Yeah. That's it. I don't care. And Any, Samuel is it different. doesn't matter. That's it. Yeah. And Samuel is different. He's a hiding <laughs> battle producer. <laughs> that's what I was telling you. Know? So then you go to somebody like Sammy and you say, Sammy, we need something. We have a problem. We need something. He says, Oh, what is it? What is it? I say, Well, we have to have this shot. Uh, I talked to Christoph. We could have, um, you could do it for this, um, for X, or we could do it for 2X. It could cost double. Uh, what do you, we can get away with it, but maybe it'd be good to do twice as much. Right. And Sammy goes, well, maybe we need three times as much. Is this enough? We need more. No. One zombie? No, no. We need a hundred zombies. Exactly. <laughs> Say, Sammy, it's not in the budget. Yeah, but the movie, the movie. <laughs> exactly, exactly. In fact, it, some, some, some love when we, when we had body count to the film. <laughs> You know, he's very, very, very obsessed by the body count. I remember on Craig Freeman, he asked us to have this this sequence where Craig Freeman is using these big oh. guns, you know, with rockets, you know. Uh, and so people can go flying out of the water. He wanted some Rambo, Rambo uh, action. But it's great, you know. Uh -huh. I, I like that. I like when the producer say, okay, if I give you $50,000, how many you... more people can you kill? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's good. That's real produce. Producer job. So Jeffrey Combs is now yeah. writing in his little book. Okay. So the second segment is done by a guy Shukaneko. named Shukaneko. He was Shusuke not very Kaneko. famous in a, at that time, but he, be, he became famous because he is the director of the Free Gamera movie mm -hmm. that many people, including myself, consider as the best kaiju Iga since the original mm -hmm. Godzilla. You know, he, he made great job on this trilogy about the giant turtle in in Japan. And he did also a very good um, Jap Japanese or often name Crossfire recently, you know, two years ago. So, mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of like a fish out of water on this on this set. Well, you know, it was it. funny. He was definitely, <laughs> well, first of all, I think there was a great deal of, of um, hubris on my side mm. on this whole thing, because I always have this, I have this opinion um, mm. that I could take, that anybody can direct a movie. Mm. If they, if you, if they'll listen and let you help them, you can, you can make a movie good. Anybody, because you have to understand what they want and try to help them understand it. I think with this, the idea was that we could take a Japanese um, director and put him in, in the, um, in Hollywood, in, a, in L.A., and help him make a movie. Well, Shu was not really speaking English very well. And he also has a personality which is um, not dynamic. Mm. It's a very calm personality. I think and he was he's... like every Japanese director. You no, know, no, but I, more I... so because when I asked Taka, I said, you know, we have a hard time understanding Shu. I think it's the language. Okay. Taka said, no, even Japanese people have a hard time understanding Shu. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Shu did a great thing for me because I went to Tokyo and he took me to the, the what is it, the Nikatsu studio? Mm -hmm. And um, we went to see some shooting. And, you know, he began as a first AD. Mm. And he was a he really he really learned how to make movies the same way somebody like Sergio Leone did or the oh, wow. I think a lot of the the directors from the from the beginning of cinema or at least yeah. the 30s and 40s yeah. they began by helping As, directors like they an began apprentice, like an yeah apprentice, they were assistants they worked their yeah, way up uh, to yeah. the point where they were a director today yeah. a director comes in from from film school and is already like a me. genius like you, You're already a genius <laughs> when you hit the set. But um, Shu was really somebody who had worked in the cinema yeah. all his life. And I think when he got to LA, it was just very, it was very tough for him 
to be working. Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. And he also yeah. was not used to having the pressure at the and time. You didn't know any better. Know. Now you'd never do it. But at the time, you had no. You you didn't know any better to know that you yeah. can't do this in this time period. Yeah. But Shu did, <laughs> and I think that I think it was very. It was a tough. It was a tough time for him. And then I think Taka came in, and was actually handling more Shu's side of it. Yeah. He was the one who sat with him for the casting and, and planned the film with him. Dennis Christopher. Oh, Dennis the, Christopher. You know, every fan remember him because he was a hero of Fade to Black. Yeah, yeah. Very, very weird B-movie about a young fan who decide to uh, kill people under the disguise of different... Hopalong Cassidy. Icon. Yeah. Dra Dracula. And the director was um, Zimmerman, or what's his name? The director of Fade to Zimmerman. Black. I think so. I'm trying to yeah. remember, because I worked with him on a project. We yeah. worked with, with Rick Fry, who oh. was one of our uh, creative consultants yeah. on this. We worked on a very strange kind of Area 51 type of film. Yeah. 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 Now, this is also a story inside a story. And here, I think Take Chise shot this part. I think he was shooting second unit. Yeah, I remember for, he was um, shooting all the sequence with the music instrument. Mm -hmm. And Taka is a very is really a very important and talented producer in Japan. One of the sort of new generation of um, Japanese mm -hmm. producers. He produced he, the Ring. The Ring. One of the best yeah. horror movies of the last year. So. Absolutely, and not and not only that, he's actually quite a um, accomplished director. He directed um, the yes. the Tokyo, the last mega, mega, megalopolis. 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 Yeah, which is quite Maybe. a beautiful picture. You know who this actress is? Um, Lily Perkins. Lily Perkins. She's Diary wonderful. of Anne Frank. Yeah, she's true. She's that amazing actress mm -hmm. from Diary of of Anne Frank. She's a very, very strong actress. Also, uh, somebody who's very famous uh, today is Kajinori Ito. Yeah. Kajinori yeah. Ito is the screenwriter of the seventh segment yeah. and is very well known among the manga fans because he wrote Pat Labor theory. Yeah. You know, and, and after this one, he wrote uh, all the free camera film for mm -hmm. Shukaneko again. And uh, he's, he's one of the best Japanese screenwriter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a great... Uh, I was really um, thrilled when I went to meet Shu. I also met Kazunori Ito mm. at the same time. Mm. And it was really great to see these people yeah. that, I, that I thought were very um, professional, yeah. very, very talented. It was... Uh, it was a great experience. I thought that actually, I thought, I always felt like um, Shu's segment had the best story. I thought it really oh, had absolutely. the best story of the three. Completely. And it was very clearly... It was very clearly clear, structured. Yeah. Uh, for example, my segment is, is just a pure series of impression. Mm -hmm. There is no real story. It's, it's mm -hmm. like, or it, it's like a dream of a story because, it, as I said, mm -hmm. the story is so huge that it's difficult to just mm -hmm. make it alive on 29 minutes time mm -hmm. you know and but it's true that the second segment is the, the, the well structured no i always felt with yours the that that i just wanted to see belinda bauer come back that's <laughs> that true. was my that's only true. Me too. that was my and i think that yeah. was only where the cuz i think the narrative began with her the tension between her exactly and um, bruce payne and because sh she started out as a fat disgusting guy <laughs> she didn't make it to come back exactly. and i think if she had come back for the battle and yeah. he had saved her from the monster then yeah. we would have had a narrative exactly but instead it became a kind of a a um it's almost like a um train of thought kind yeah. of a free association yeah you know i have i have still the same problem mm -hmm. in for example in the pack de Lou. the pack de Lou is built toward many different climax you know yeah. and uh, I, you know i must work on, on this well <laughs> i think next but one. i mean the, tr the traditional narrative is is that you finish the movie when the when the monster or the bad guy dies and the good guy gets the girl yeah. or he doesn't get the girl mm -hmm. but it's all belinda but she was beautiful she should have come back next time you have to use her again. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. I think you should use her. She was great. 
I think most of all the editing of this was done by Chris Roth. Oh, yeah. Our good buddy and collaborator. Yeah, the he, 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 he co-editors to Crying Freeman. Yeah. 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 He was, um, he's always a, a pleasure to work with because yeah. he's a complete genre fanatic. Yeah. He knows it all. He and you know that the start on Kyler. Killer Clown yeah, killer from clowns outer, from space. outer Space. <laughs> <laughs> That's his first job. What was uh, very disturbing is the fact that uh, it left immediately after the shooting. Yeah. So basically, we, ha we, we had the charge to edit and, yeah, and then segment. we sent it to him. Yeah. But that's also something that's more of a traditional a pre 1960s mm. kind of way of making films. The the director wasn't always in charge of the editing. The director exactly. planned the movie, yeah. he shot the movie. Often the casting wasn't the director's yeah. choice. I think yeah. Ilya Kazan won his first Academy Award and didn't cast the movie or edit the movie. Yeah. This is, uh, I think it's more of a, it's a different style of shooting yeah. and this may be based on Shu's background. Yeah. But I've seen it happen before. I know, for example, on, on Reanimator, Stewart made a first cut of the movie and then Lee Percy cut the movie and, mm. and we communicated by videotape. Mm. And he made his comments based on, mm. on the videotape. But together we like the, the editing experience. I love I Yeah, love I mean, editing. that's like it. a second shooting. Yeah, I can almost imagine being an editor except that you never see the sun. Yeah. And I think you have to be outside yeah. sometimes. Oh, yeah. And that's why I think directing and producing is great because mm. you get to do everything. But I love going into the little cave and looking at the magic box mm. and seeing how the story completely changes. Mm. It's a complete, um, you, it's storytelling. A good mm. editor is really a good storyteller. This is David Werner. But we saw again in Titanic. <laughs> yeah, well, he's This guy can jump from very low budget to very high he budget. He just works all the time. Yeah. He wasn't, wasn't, he's was, not an easy person. Huh? I, no, uh, he's I a great actor, so. but not an easy person. I remember him always, you know, on the def defense. You know, mm -hmm. he didn't like to speak. And Millie Perkins was Millie Perkins was very, great. you know, uh, nice and gentle. And David Warner was much more like a cool, cold well, I uh, think English in a, guy. In fact, he's. I don't. Yeah, he's. He wasn't quite the. He wasn't quite the casting you would imagine from um, from Mr. Ito's script. No. You know, he the 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 character from the script was a much more, much more kind of dynamic, kind of complicated character. And attractive. Yeah. Too, I think. So while Jerry Lively was shooting this for 10 days, Russ Brandt was, was preparing your movie. Yeah. And you remember and why? Tony Tremblay was making, um, was dressing this set while he was building your set. Mm -hmm. And you remember why uh, Russ Brandt became my DP? It's because my... Oh, oh, you brought DP a DP from France. Yeah, what was his name? I forget. Ah, don't don't say the oh, name. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you must keep the name secret. But that's you, right. He, he ran came, away. He, he ran away. You know, I came back to my home and I found a note. I go back to my wife. Really? I mean, I didn't why? know you had such an intimate relationship. With yeah, him. yeah. It was kind of very. He close. left you for his yeah, wife. Yeah. Yeah, he left, he left. No, he left me because he found that the schedule was crazy. It's, it was crazy. Yeah, it's impossible. And he ran away. Uh -huh. You know, without saying me anything. I remember. You know, we were in the same house, and I came back one night, and I found the note on the table. You know, and the guy was he saying, says, "I you can't know, do this." I go back to my wife. I remember. I will always remember this note. I go uh -huh. back to my wife. <laughs> it's like I go back to mommy, uh -huh. you know? And it, I, I was astonished. It. it was my first movie and my DP was running away uh -huh. immediately. <laughs> well, there's a, there, there, this, is, this is something that I think is kind of common in, in film, is this idea of disaster, of, you know. of failure. That's a fear that comes very big. I think you were very lucky because, first of all, you're, you're slightly unbalanced, and secondly, you didn't know... <laughs> Mm. And I think that um, I was, because at that time we were preparing yours, we were running around. I oh, yeah. Remember we went out to yeah. um, to the water park yeah. to look at the tide 
the the swimming pool where they make waves yeah. to see if we could shoot the water sequence in there because mm -hmm. we were afraid to put the car in the water on the beach. Finally, we never did. No, and it didn't matter. And you remember why? Because the water because it would be pulled away or no. couldn't get the water wet. Or it's because the the, the car. Uh, Rake was on a truck and the truck was lost on the oh, freeway, right, right. you know, right. and it was impossible in, in, in terms of schedule to come back to the yeah, to the, yeah. the beach to do this shot of the car under the waves. Yeah. And during all the shooting, I was saying, I want my car sun car shot. The and finally, I did it with the, the, the model, the, the car model, yeah. the Barbie. And then I went so cool. into the, the, the aquarium. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I told Stuart that when we were doing Dagon, I, I said, you know, don't worry. I said, you want to do the underwater stuff. Why worry about going under with the crew and mm -hmm. make a miniature? And I showed him this miniature stuff. I said, you know, it looks better. It's more genre. Yeah. It's more classic genre. We're yeah. not doing Jaws, you know. Yeah. We're doing a different type of story. Yeah, but but you know, Brian, there is a different type of quality between a shot that you plan to do and a shot that you have to do because if not, you have your, no your cutting is uh -huh. not complete. Well, that's funny. That's Most of the shots different. I do are the ones I have to do. <laughs> I don't you know, know if I do. And, many and that really, I, I prefer, uh -huh. uh, you know, into the result, I prefer the shot born from a compromise mm -hmm. than the shot that I have planned to do. Yeah. Most part of the time, shot born from a compromise. I have something inside There's very something real. Yeah. In real and, but, and, yeah, and, and I always tell people that. I said, don't ever, complain, don't ever complain about not having what you wanted because mm -hmm. you're never going to have what you wanted. It doesn't matter. But what's great is that when you have to compromise and when you have to limit and you have to, you have to make a, a last-minute decision, exactly. what happens is it forces you to get rid of all the bullshit and you find out what really you think is important. Because the minute you have to start getting rid of things... Exactly. You start remember. You start finding out what is yeah. truly important yeah. to you. Yeah. You know. Until then, you let you down want the everything. fat and you go right to the bone. You bottom. just say, you know what? <laughs> exactly. To live, I must have my heart. Forget exactly. my leg. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is important to say is that the movie basically has been completely uh, reshot in terms of special effects. You can a lot of a lot of. Um, a lot of this movie was completely reshot in yeah. terms of special effects. Because it turns that the mm -hmm. very first uh, draft of the editing was not uh, very um, convincing in terms mm -hmm. of special effects. So uh, we had to go back to the studio, mm -hmm. remember, and we, we shot many different yeah. special effects shots. Yeah, I always, I always tell people when they... It, it's. The funny thing is, is that when you when you shoot movies like this for a very limited budget and you're trying to do so much, mm. one of the things that you do is may is if you're doing special effects is that you know that so many of them are not going to work. You just know it. And <laughs> I always tell people okay. when they say, "Oh, the effects guy screwed up. They didn't get it right." And I say, "Hey, it's called special effects because it's we're trying to do something that's not normal." And we don't have the For money. Sure. And if you go, if you really budget them right, yeah. then they budget you to do it three times plus a contingency because they know that it's not going to work and they're going to have to redo it. And I say, you know, when we do it, we use what we can get. If we can do something, if we can fix it, we fix it. But in fact, it's um, it's a percentage game mm -hmm. with this type of film. So every time you come up with a great idea. You don't know if it's going to work or not. Sometimes it works beautifully. Yeah, but here it was pretty intensive. For example, for the meltdown that we are going to see at the end of this uh, segment, everything has been reshot by yeah. you. Yeah, well, you know, that, that was, uh, that was Screaming Mad George, who, was, um, who of course, um, is very familiar with, um, with, with um, the Japanese producers and Shushu Kaneko because he's, he's Japanese. He's, Japanese. Yeah. he's from Kyoto. And he is a, he's a real artist and always has great ideas. He's not the kind of guy you go to. I always work with George whenever I can. And he's not the guy you go to to do a typical gore effect or something. There's certain types of 
companies like KNB or somebody mm-hmm. that you go because you know they're going to give you the good professional version of, of a certain type of effect. With George, mm-hmm. you always go for a twisted idea. Mm-hmm. You go to get a concept. And I but think he was on a different agenda at that time, you remember. Yeah. He was into a band. Oh, of course. He was yeah. playing he's into also, a band. Yeah, he's also a band. Uh-huh. Yeah. He does, it was called, uh, well, you know, he started in music because his name actually comes from a punk band he had called The Mad. Mm. And he was a big fan of Screaming Jay Hawkins. Of course. And his punk band was an art band in New York during the punk era. And then he called himself Screaming Mad George, kind mm. of as a Dali-type character. Yeah. He considers himself a surrealist, and you know he has a very strange aspect to yeah. him. But is yeah. a, but he's quite a great artist. And you see, when he did something like like on Jeffrey Combs doing the chin in the nose, you say, you know, that's, that's, that's very top-class makeup effects. And then when he starts doing strange stuff, when we do something like Society... It's letting George go crazy. Mm. When you try to get something in between, then you're going Subtle. for a concept. Yeah. And I think here his concept was that that um, David Warner was was having this. I'm trying to remember now. He he was constantly putting this fluid in his system yeah. to keep him from rotting because mm. he's basically his body's dead. It's like the, the case of M. Valdemar. Mm. And so George had the idea that when he melted that in fact this stuff would pull his skin yeah. it would come right out of his skin rather than the more mm-hmm. traditional version exactly and i think what happened was somehow it i i'm i you know what we'd have to watch it again watch the effect the way it was to realize why it what didn't work about it mm-hmm. and once again i always have to say this is typical this is not a failure Obviously, it's a it's an experiment And what we have to say is that most of the special uh, uh, makeup effects have been redone by a guy named Bart Mix, you know, who really saved the film. Who's the twin brother of of Brett Mix. Brett Mix. And they have... And Brett and Bart saved the film, you know. For example, they redo entirely my monster at the end of my segment, Mm -hmm. you know, the Cthulhu monster, Mm -hmm. uh, like you can see it in the final result, come from the Bart Mix and... Mm-hmm. And also, Brett did um, did um, what now is never done anymore, which is what do you call it? rotoscope. Exactly. And of course, nobody probably even knows what rotoscope is anymore because it's too yeah. it's too old. too old. But rotoscope was before digital effects, yeah. and so it's it meant that paint you, some light right. It was on the taking film. animation exactly. on another cell. So when you see the 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 lightning or the pentagram the book, coming or the pentagram, pentagram coming green this is yeah. all drawn by Brett Mixon today yeah. of course they would do it on the on the yeah, on the computer and it would be way smoother but you know there's something very very um, genre too about this mm-hmm. to see this it's like doing the backwards tentacles it's like you know doing the um, The rubber effects. I mean, we look at rubber effects, and generally they look like rubber effects. But there's something... To me, it's almost like doing the expressionistic lighting. Mm. To do shadows where there shouldn't be any shadows. Mm. Because that's the style of the movie. It's a storytelling style. And I think it fits, you know. Here we come to the um, to the effect, right? To the, the yeah. big meltdown. The This is a, a reveal that... Mm that in fact the heat is going to um, kill him. I lose my senses. I remember and this is the beginning of yeah, yeah. George's of the original cons- meltdown. concept. Yeah, original meltdown. I remember you shooting that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was shooting uh, my, my squid uh, vomit. In, <laughs> and you were shooting oh, that was uh, the, this, even in this the, meltdown. Even in the, you know, just a few meters from me. Uh-huh. You know. Even in the... Even in the um, In the the insert shooting, the extra yeah. f- stuff, we did it all at once. <laughs> oh, that's a new new meltdown. Uh, really disgusting. <laughs> oh my god. Back to the classic meltdown. Oh, yo, yo, yo. You remember it was an anorexic girl. Yeah. They were yeah, using yeah. because she was so thin, so thin. It was possible to, to put her into uh-huh. a makeup. And without having the big this head or large shoulder, you remember <laughs> she was adorable. This, this is this is a jello here. Oh, this yeah. is this is the um, the zombie. 
This is Lamberto Bravo. Oh, oh, yo. Hey, gap. <laughs> it's an Italian zombie. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like, I like, I like the, yeah. the last high. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's real classic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So much goo. And, you know, the goo was a major element on this uh, shooting. You know, goo everywhere. Yeah. You know, you were obsessed by goo at that period. You, you were telling me all the time, put some goo <laughs> on your makeup. With goo, well, it's much better. Well, I, you know, say, I, I like when it's, it's, it's full of goo. You know? But you know, I've had to deal so many times with coming onto a set, and then you see the effect, and your heart falls. Yeah. And the whole crew's standing by, and you can't, you can't show them your disappointment. Yeah. And so you go, how do we make this work? And I, and I think I learned... At, Some things from Mac Alberg, the, the DP oh, yeah, of sure. Reanimator and sure. From Beyond, who's yeah. a genius yeah. at shooting these types of effects. But one of the things I found was that if you take the, the stuff that looks like crap, it looks terrible, looks totally fake, okay. but if you put a lot of goo on it, you keep the lights changing. Yeah, and you have some reflection. And then you put some smoke in the air. It looks <laughs> great. <laughs> and if you're Kristoff, you move the camera too. <laughs> yeah, I remember. And this is what brings, true, this brings it to life. Is how food. It's awful. And yeah. you know what the terrible thing is? Is all the, all the effects guys want you to shoot it without colored light, without goo, without atmosphere, because they work so hard on it mm -hmm. that what they see is something we don't see. Mm -hmm. And when you light it, what happens is it reflects the light so, so, roughly. Mm -hmm. It looks terrible. But if you have goo, it gives life to the light. Okay. Okay, so you must. So goo is important. Okay. Yeah. Goo blinking put lights. Put some goo on your face, and you will look alive. Huh? <laughs> when I'm when I'm very old and I'm oh, yeah. in my chair, yeah. I'm going to okay. put goo. goo. <laughs> Mr. Goo. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Dennis Christopher. You fucking fool. I liked him. Unfortunately. The air conditioning unit in this building is old. It's very actor studio. Mm -hmm. He's always twisted. Yeah, yeah, look at him. You know, yeah, he's, so he's, you know, he's playing a lot. A I mean, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, he should be with he should be with Richard Lynch in a scene. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a real actor. You should see what I mean. That's a weird idea that they never... They, 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 she's pregnant for ev for forever. forever. Ah, that's, that's weird. No, that's that's what um, Kazunori Ito brought to the cool air story mm. of because if because um, Lovecraft's story was just revealing the mm. truth mm. that he's he was he's dead his body's dead but he's alive and that's a horror. But I think um, Kazunori Ito brought the idea that um, it was much more twisted than that. Okay, now we're entering into your part. Right. And now this is interesting, too, because, in fact, while I was preparing, trying to take care of um, Shu and trying to, trying to take care of yours, mm. all of a sudden I started completely rewriting my script because I, I, got, I got afraid and I thought, Christoph's is so beautiful and so poetic. And Shu is also doing something period and... A, a interesting story and I said oh I have to be dirty I have to be I have to make exactly. something ugly and dirty and urban and today and it was it was funny because I completely changed the whole the whole um, idea mm. of the of the story while we were preparing it while we were shooting the movie I've, I don't think I've ever done that before yeah that's true but it was really uh, I was very concerned that it wasn't going to have enough just Something hardcore yeah, gritty, to it, and gritty something stuff. ugly yeah. in it. I don't know yeah. why, but I guess it was because I saw it as a mix of things. Uh, I just saw it as a as a mix of um, of ideas, of elements. Signy, so suddenly we jump into the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, and this is, and she was somebody. It's funny because, in fact, I wonder. I cast her because I thought she was believable as a cop. Mm. And finally, I wonder if she was believable she was as vulnerable. I think maybe she was too tough. 
she's, finally. She was so tough yeah, but, that but she was too tough. Yeah, but as a police woman, mm-hmm. she's No, as very a police woman, yeah. she's completely believable. Oh, yeah. Comple- and this is Oba Babatunde, who was... Um, who was very uh, I don't they didn't get along that well let's put it that way <laughs> as a matter of fact Signe would get very she was very aggressive and I remember when we were shooting the episode with her and she took it very seriously huh? she was committed but she um, I remember they'd be pounding building another set while we were shooting and she would yell at the crew no they were not building and that's <laughs> or they were taking it they down. were taking off taking my furniture, furniture you know i remember that was amazing because we were shooting more than one sequence at one time in the same warehouse oh yeah we had all the sets right next to each other and this is a stunt by um by um Gary Paul who i really yeah. enjoy working with he's a very very easy stunt coordinator to work with. That was shot outside the studio, I remember. That was that was <laughs> shot that was actually shot at the old um, newspaper building yeah. downtown mm. where that that now is just used for shooting. Yeah. And yeah. we actually shot some of the interiors there too. That was a shot sta- uh, stage shot also. Yeah. Oh, and this stuff yeah. was done oh, yeah. way back. Some of this was oh, done... Yeah. Um, I remember you, you took the inserts. car into the s- on the set to mm-hmm. do that. Because what was funny is after I finished my segment, it was your segment shooting, and I was completely lost. That was the first time I was experiencing a rap. And I was completely lost, and I was wandering on the on the set, looking at you shooting that. Uh-huh. You know, I was like a zombie. You know, <laughs> you know? I was in addiction. Right. right to be a, to be around the camera. Yeah. Repeat, requesting backup and medical ASAP. Do you copy? This was a this was a very a very liberal adaptation. Of Lovecraft, definitely. All the free segment. But I really, but in a lot of ways, I think that the that the um, the real the the real core of the of the story that this all started from is still remained, which is this complete strange idea of not having a um, of not having a body, of just being your sense, not even having a connection to your sensory. Mm. Organs. It was called the Whisper in the Darkness. But as it, I turned remember out, very well the, the the original short novel. The original, yeah. yeah. The, it, was, it was happening into a cabin. In yeah, the and there's crab creatures exactly from the mountain. Exactly. And they're shooting, um, they're shooting people's brains up to outer space. Exactly. Yeah. I love Lovecraft. Each. Five years. I'm and this is a work. <laughs> this is a filthy place to work. This was a air duct up. Then we're shooting inside that air duct, and it's it's just filthy. Everything about this place was was grimy and soot and filth. I don't think that there was. Oh yeah, the 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 final when they finally go underneath, it becomes a set. But this stuff was all just the ugliest, dirtiest yeah. place to be. It, it looked like it looked like a, 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 a you know, um, we are into a Resident Evil video game. You know? <laughs> the girl with a gun running through, mm-hmm. you know, a narrow corridor. Oh, uh, this yeah. is a tough, tough gag by Gary Clean. Paul. I love that feeling. Of being suspended. Brent Friedman was the um, was the was the one who. I think he had a hand in writing or polishing the dialogue of all the mm. of all the stories 
but in fact this story was was more his i think this he really wrote the script on this i think on your episode maybe he worked on some dialogue and i think on yes. um on cool air he also polished some dialogue but when it came to this um this particular um segment is definitely the characters of Brent Friedman's characters because mm. he always writes these really these really absurd kind of twisted kind of um, characters. I like Don Kalfa as an actor. He's a very close friend of Richard Lynch. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And he was... I I always liked him since I saw him in, um, in Return of the Living Dead by Dan O'Bannon. And he played the... Um, he played the morgue... Yeah, a but, guy, and I uh, thought that was me, such a brilliant. Um, yeah, and me, I remember him from Ten, from Black Edward's oh, yeah? film, really? where he's playing the guy who's organized orgy in front of uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the the house of uh, the hero, of Ten. You know, he was always naked. You know, with beautiful oh, right. women. <laughs> you know, well, he's also a. Um, I think the the one thing that really that I was trying to get. To get across in this story, which I don't know if it ever, it didn't really come through, was that, in fact, and this is very Lovecraft, which is that, in fact, under Los Angeles, you, we have ruins. Yeah, These cave. old ruins. Cave. And these old ruins yeah. also are protecting where lives a big monster, yeah. a horrible monster an underground. An and this monster is actually, when it moves, we have an earthquake. <laughs> Yeah. And this, mo and in fact, they end up going inside the monster, yeah. and I think that's kind of very Lovecraft, except that Lovecraft would have it in another dimension. Yeah. But I like this. I, I always like this idea that underground or behind the wall, mm -hmm. there's these incredible, this incredible horror that we don't even know about. That we're just going to be, we live our lives without even knowing what danger we're in. Yeah, it's funny to note that uh, together we made, uh, we use the same theme of the uh, the entity mm -hmm. lying under the ground. You know, well, I think that's and... that's the Lovecraft part, perhaps. You know, that's what we love. This is Lovecraft. this is the the very mild reference to the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's got. The oh, book. yeah, we ha we had to put the book uh -huh. somewhere. But I like this. I like the these um, the character that um, Don Kalfa and Judith Drake played. In fact, in fact, I had cast another actress and had to pay her, and and took Judith Drake because I thought she was much more, more effective. But I really like this, um, these two characters because they're just complete liars. It's like you know that no matter what they say, it's a, this girl is completely finding that she can't trust anything. They are like a, a figure of father and and mother, <laughs> you know. And Bad feather and bad money. <laughs> yeah. And I like when she tells her, she says, she says, well, what about your husband? She says, well, I don't know him. I just met him last week. She says, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And she says, did you tell him, did, did he tell you that the aliens did it? And she says, what about the aliens? She says, no, he's not an alien. He just helps them. <laughs> I thought, oh, you know that you're in trouble now. I think poor, poor um, Signe. Signe is actually the, um, I don't remember if she was, she's the girlfriend or the wife of, um, uh, what's the name of the director? He directed for Charlie Band Zone Troopers, Paul DeMeo and Danny Bilson. Danny Bilson and Paul DeMeo are writers. They wrote um, Rocket Man. Mm -hmm. For Disney, yeah, and then the Danny Stone Bilson film. actually moved up to Vancouver right when we were leaving mm -hmm. from from Crying Freeman, and he lives there now. He was producing television series up there. Mm. He's been down here since before the dinosaurs, if you can believe it. And this was shot right down in that building. This is a set built in the um, in that building. That was very difficult for Tony Tremblay too. To make the three art directions oh, at the same time, you to know. do so many different movies yeah. at once, yeah. and these were almost all. Mo I mean, they weren't simple. They weren't simple either. And to do three of them on a very low budget in a very mm. short time, very tricky. 
and when we get to the um, to this ruins under the under the city, he could only build. I think there were six different faces. Yeah. So then we had to just keep turning them mm -hmm. to make uh, to make another corridor. I remember. I, I loved uh, the set. I love this room. type of thing. Yeah. The idea that underneath Los Angeles there's yeah. these ruins that nobody knows about. Yeah. That others so kind of and that's kind of inspiration. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and that's and that's kind of like at the Mountains of Madness or something. Except instead of being up in the Arctic, it's right here. Yeah. You know. You could imagine this um, under our feet now in Paris. That mm. you know, oh, you thousands are. of you years ago, yeah. there's been some civilizations yeah. that have. Um, it's true that, that that you know we are doing this audio commentary in Paris That's on right. a very rainy day, because yep. someday some people in Los Angeles will listen to us exactly. talking about Necronomicon, and we must say that we are doing that We're in, in Paris. In Paris. Yes. And you're coming from Barcelona. That's and, right. And living here. And Taka was with us last night for yeah. dinner yeah. with Sammy, and and he just came from Tokyo. So this still carries on the the experiment of Necronomicon. I always thought this movie was an experiment. It was taking the elements and see what happens. Hmm. You know what? What interests me in Lovecraft, I think, is it's become it became very very cult and popular simply because he has anticipated on the acid culture. Yeah. You know the fact, you know all the thing about dreams and the and the belief into a huge entity. You know, ex you know. Mm -hmm. Thing like that. I think it's it's very like a post uh, acid culture yeah. uh, themes. And, See, I and really I like this your, section uh, here. Your segment. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a, a kind of uh, you know um, strange, um, you know, almost you know acid inspiration. You know, you enter into this strange Indian tomb. You know, under Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and you go to the to the truth. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to show in the sculpture the Indians telling the story yeah. of the monster that you have to feed. Yeah. And so that's why when he's the butcher, it's the butcher is, and he says, no, the butcher is not an alien because he's really the butcher. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is just bringing to yeah. feed the monster just like the old Indians did. What I like in your, in, in your segment is, is very, you know, um, Freudian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you you're always sneaking into you know narrow place. You've plenty of organic yeah. goo, <laughs> and it's all and it's all about and it's all yeah. about the um, conflict that a woman has about abortion. Yeah, that in fact what she's afraid of is that she's the butcher because she wants to have an abortion, and with the car wreck she's actually losing her child. Exactly. So in fact, it's all about her being the butcher for wanting yeah. to kill her baby. And, and the two and figure of the father and the mummy represent the, the Puritan, the, almost the Puritan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, conflict yeah. with the, you know, the parents. It's, it's, it's a very twisted it's idea. It's very twisted. But I like this idea. I always find that I, a lot of times I take the opposite side of, a, of an issue like that than I than I believe consciously mm. for dramatic purposes. Mm. Like on the one hand, of course, I'm completely I, I have no no question about my position on on something like abortion. And yet in this movie, I'm playing it as a slaughter of yeah. an innocent. I'm yeah. playing it as the horror of. Um, I think that all of this abortion. sequence of her uh, going down into the the pit. Uh, the bloody pit is mm -hmm. is like a, a metaphor of the abortion. Yeah, because yeah. now Completely. she's inside the monster, exactly. and we see that the monsters carry inside their bellies like a child mm. the life, but unformed. I, I I remember that in England I read a critic reproaching to your film to be very conservative. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm saying. It's like, <laughs> in fact, I'm completely. On the, uh, I'm completely liberal on the issue, yeah. and yet I'm using the conservative. I'm playing the conservative side. Yeah. This is strange yeah. because it's instinctual. Mm. It's, but I think most people have this conflict. 
That's I true. think anybody who who's involved with with abortion has this conflict. No matter what you think about it, it's it's just the same conflict you have to I think to eat a hamburger, mm -hmm. to eat a eat a cow. You mm -hmm. say, you know, let's go kill the cow now. You it's know, a very strong. I think you're sinking <laughs> compare the abortion to an hamburger. I think that you're sinking, <laughs> sinking into your ambivalence. You know, I don't want to follow you into this this analysis. You know, I don't want. You know, I'm French and I'm very liberal. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like, all these I like the shot of the girl on the, on well, the altar. You know what's funny about this is that when I went, Todd Masters did the effects for this. He was a friend of Brent Friedman's, and he had done effects on Resurrected, that Dan O'Bannon movie. Great film. Yeah, that, that Brent Friedman wrote. Mm. And um, when I went to the shop to talk to him about making the creatures and to doing the effects for this segment, because you know we used many different effects companies. We didn't mention John Bullich, we didn't mention um, Optic job. Nerve, mm -hmm. um, and Todd Masters did a lot of these effects. And you know, there I remember going there and we were starting to do a body cast. This is a, a nice zombie section here, but this is a bit of the thing, the, the whisper in the dark, because he's just a, um, a puppet and he actually exists in another place. But there was people who wouldn't work. I remember going to the effects house and one guy working talked, saw Todd, he says, oh, is this for Necronomicon? And he said, yes, he says, oh, he said, okay, well, you can go work on the, the um, vampire movie. And I said, what's the matter? He says, well, I have some people who won't work on this movie because they think it's blasphemous and evil. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> In Los Angeles, effects guys work horror movies, but they won't work on this movie because they say it's um, it's evil. That's Strange, true. huh? Yeah. But I I like this kind of horror here. There's the the puppeteer. This this is loosely, but still, it's the it's the whisper in the darkness. You know, the idea that the the creature yeah, is controlling. Yeah, what I like what I like is it's it's truly grotesque mm -hmm. i mean that the way this guy is moving you know like an mm -hmm. epileptic and then you have this strange bat coming out of the body you know it's and it's here truly he is grotesque. speaking to her from yeah. inside yeah it's, uh, that's uh, that's something that i always like into the genre is the fact that when it became like you know weird mm -hmm. you know well it becomes very it becomes very dreamlike and yeah. very very um, look at that <laughs> <laughs> but I remember directly wanting these creatures to be able to move. Now, this is where some CG effects could have helped a lot. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> because we couldn't move these things, and they were built out of... Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> and they were built out of big rubber, big, heavy, heavy rubber that couldn't be moved. You know, you, you, you took so much risk making this creature flying. I know, it was so stupid. Too much risk. I always know, do that. You know, it, it, it was crazy. Yeah, it's just, it's nuts. Because you just, you know, when it doesn't work, you're really screwed. Yeah. It's the belly of the beast. Remember the giant claw. The giant claw. It's difficult to make playing a monster. It is. You know. It's very difficult. You're a specialist. I, you I must know into, that. I know, but I run it. But see, I'm always, I'm always too positive. Every time I go into a movie and they, to make a movie and they, you have a low budget and no time, mm -hmm. and I say, what am I going to do? Not do what I want to do because I don't have any money or time? <laughs> oh, that's something that I really like. When you have this strange <laughs> soul coming out of the mouth of the poor actress. That's weird. Now this is the typical, um, typical horror movie sequence where you, it's a, is it a dream? Am I a man dreaming I'm a butterfly or a butterfly dreaming I'm a man? Yeah. I like, I, oh, I like the painting. It's a strange painting into the hospital with part of the old set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. No, I like that. There really. is the father and mother. Oh yeah, of course. We thought we loved you. What happened? And it's nice also had the contrast with There's the nice white walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm for several days now. I had the most horrible nightmare. And now we're back to the guilt it's quite thing. normal with near-death experiences such as yours. Your mind tries to rationalize your traumas to help you make sense of an irrational world. Sarah, is there something you'd like to tell me about the accident? 
something you want to get off Yeah, I thought about it often. I thought, you know, I just shouldn't have had those damn things fly. I just wanted to have this feeling of being inside a big womb and having all these things coming out of the walls. You know, I, I think, had this image at the beginning that these, these things would actually be the whole wall of the womb, the whole wall would be these things pressed together, and instead, what you have is a, Personally, is a heavy piece of rubber. I would have played on the shadow, only on the shadow. Yeah, the sound and the shadow. Maybe that would have worked, but I like to see the monsters. Of course, I like to see the, I like to see the guys. You know, <laughs> they just should have perhaps been conceived up differently. But they are strange looking. They just don't move well. What? He's in the next bed oh. over. Oh, oh. I thought you wanted it that way. And here comes an effect that... Um, That's obscene. That's an yeah. obscene shot. Look at the way you're, you're framing... Ah! You're framing the mouth of this fat woman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. No uh. horror. <laughs> oh, no. She uh. thought she was free. But this is an effect that could have used a little more goo and blinking lights coming up. <laughs> uh, <I like laughs> this that. has to be ridiculous. But see, you can see here where a little, a little bit of goo and blinking lights would have helped a lot. That's a baby. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my God. Uh. And this is a very now. This I really oh, like nice. because very that nice. was a yeah. on stage effect. Yeah, on stage and I really the, like that. Very effect. Yeah, it's great. The, each shot carries it one step further to uh, to back to where she was. Uh, <laughs> I think mean, it's like a milkshake. You know, the monster is sucking the blood from a cut leg, <laughs> like a milkshake. That's good, you know. And here goes the boot. I like the way Dan Kalfa makes his exit. That's, he just uh, has to get back to work now. <laughs> oh my god. What a, it's like a comic book, you know? I think we can. I think it will take many hours to analyze what you did. Yeah, it's so bizarre. It's definitely a nightmare for okay. Sydney. It's like you put in your segment all the blood which was well, lacking from well, your that's, own segment. That's what I was saying. Yeah, it's like I changed it completely. And I think it also ended up with um, it also ended up with not a narrative. Mm -hmm. Like this has this is just it's more like the, the drowned when it comes to narrative. It's just a series of images. Mm -hmm. Whereas the um, the cool air actually has a story. It's not finished. No, we have to have the wrap around. Yeah. And we are going to see the, the shot which make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many so many things were cut out of this. Huh? We tried many, many different things that didn't work. And once again, it came to monsters. Put it back! We must, you know, we must precise also that uh, you did the third segment and also the wrap around. Right, the wrap director. And it was completely it's different. Like I said, I, here's a John Beekler monster. Oh, yeah. John Beekler is very well known f uh, because he did all the Ghoulies uh, film yeah. for Charles yeah. Band, you know, with mm -hmm. strange little, you know, creature. Oh, yeah. you, you, know, know. you know, John did a, actually did a, um, a version of the cat in Reanimator. Because oh. I always wanted the cat to be more... More. D this is a good effect by yeah. Screaming Mad George, and it's all in the cutting. It's I, an effect. That's I saw just a movie which cutting. make exactly the same effect. Yeah. Oh, well, now you it's would copy, never do it that way. It's copy. And yeah, now you would do it digitally. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I, I, I was on the set this day. <laughs> Poor you Jeff. Know, it was really disgusting. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's become really crazy. You know? It's so just leads completely go, nuts. Go wild, you know? Well, this is a place where the where the spectacle should have taken over, but um, it didn't quite. And here's another place where rubber. Oh. See, this is where this is where you can see that you need rubber, blinking lights, and smoke. Oh yeah. Because the light is is. Um, uh -oh. 
is not forgiving. It's a crying shot. Now we have our big okay. special effect. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Consider your privileges remote. This is... Oof. Voilà. That's a shot. Yeah, all the all the thought that went into you that. know it looked all like an old outer limits episode suddenly yeah. you have this this crazy bug aid monster everywhere yeah. you know with rubber mask you know uh oh <laughs> oh my god but jeffrey never loses his cool no. He always plays. He's like Vincent Price. He always plays oh. it straight. Oh, yeah. Lovecraft! You don't know what you've done. The mausoleum. It's amazing that we no shot pain. that in the middle of all these dead bodies. Oh, you. And that's that's me making my appearance. Although I... I my voice is dubbed by one of the Wallet group. We can go now. Take care of yourself, Mikey. Have a good night. And the, the, the car is going away so slowly. The you, car could hardly you have move. a monster, you know, <laughs> running after you, you know. You have not to take this car. It's better to okay. run on your legs. It found me. So it, I think it's appropriate that it has uh, it has this kind of framing like Mystery Theater 2000. <laughs> it kind of fits. <laughs> and the, the very complicated uh, credits here. Huh? Yeah. So the movie um, uh, became uh, quite a success on video in, in America. It has been mm -hmm. released uh, during Halloween. And I remember, you know, it, it made make big sale, you know. It, it was kind of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a movie that fans can like. Yeah. I remember there was an, an editorial in, uh, in Tufangoria saying, oh, that's a true horror <laughs> film with plenty of rubber and blood, <laughs> you know. And uh, it's true that... Um, I remember we went through so much trouble trying to think of an opening credit sequence and we started adding up all the credits that had to be given and we said, wow, it'll take eight minutes to do the credits. So we put them at the end. It was also, the, the I think, the last um, movie you did in, in America with kind of a normal budget, you know, after you... You know, it was like a changing into the industrial yeah. uh, rules of what we can. Well, but I, that movie, movie you know, yeah, but it that became movie became like much more like straight to video film, and and yeah. because it it explained why now you're 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 uh, producing movie in, uh, in in Europe, you know. Yeah, well, this movie could never have been made by an American company anyway. Yeah. Mm. It, it's impossible because they wouldn't they wouldn't um, they just wouldn't get, even get it. <laughs> But you're right, because once, uh, I think after that I did, um, the dentist. I think I did, was it the, oh, I came, after trying Freeman, I went right into the dentist. Yeah, I remember, yeah. I, I visited Right you. into the dentist. Yeah. And then, Very good film. And then, the, then Progeny and the dentist too, and then I went to Spain. Yeah. Because then I could tell that, that they were just getting more and more, it was getting more and more tight yeah. in, in, mm -hmm. um, in L.A., it's also because the international market was was mutating very very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was kind of a, of an opportunity to start on a movie like like that for me, for example, because mm -hmm. the, at that time the, the international market was still it's still on its um, ending. You know, and and willing this type of film. Mm -hmm. It's now everything changed. You know? No, you could never a new yeah. new area. Yeah, the, the, especially recently, I think the Scream movies just changed everything. There's a whole different idea. Although, although Jeepers Creepers goes back a little oh, to yeah. the to the. It's and Dagon. 
Yeah, Dagon, Dagon, yeah but Dagon's a Spanish movie. You have yeah. to understand. Yeah, but this is a, movies that yeah. are not. Um, but the movie lo yeah. looked like the last hurrah of the definitely. the old fashioned, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, movie. Dagon is definitely a throwback. You just the thing is, is it's hard to tell whether the audience will accept this type of movie. With with Jeepers Creepers, they seem to have accepted it, but Dagon is even much different from that because it's a real. It's a real sort of classic style, a mm. 70s type mm -hmm. style movie. And you just don't know if... Um, I know that the, that the real fans love it, or will love this type of movie, mm -hmm. but you just don't know if the, tip, if the general 14 to 28 year olds are gonna respond. Mm -hmm. It's why I think that the best news happening to the genre recently were the success of The Ring and The Others, mm -hmm. uh, which are, I think, two superb uh, work of pure directing, mm -hmm. you know, without any special effects, you know, mm -hmm. without anything except, you know, the, the work of the camera and the shadows, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and the face of the actress having its, you know, I think that there is a, a, a will into the audience to come back to something pure. Mm -hmm. you know, like well, they want a good movies. story told to them. It's a two good great style. story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that I think that the um, the there's I think also there's a couple ways that a movies work, and just before film, people went to the circus, mm. and they went to the theater, mm. and I think with film we still do the circus in the theater, and the end it's of the Necronomicon is, well, the end like of it is the circus. <laughs> Well, I think that's what effects are. That's what big explosions are. When you see a big effects movie or a big action movie, you're looking at a circus. And if it's if the circus is good, and the circus has death-defying feats, it has danger, it has monsters, tigers, lions, it has clowns, it has pathos, it has people, beautiful women, beautiful men, it has all of this. Mm. And it's a circus, but it doesn't really have a narrative. Mm. It doesn't really tell a story. And you go to the theater to tell the story. But then the theater also, even Shakespeare brought out the bear during the story. So I think sometimes we have to understand that movies, different movies are for different purposes and not mistaken the purpose that it's for. Sometimes the audience just wants to see the circus, but it better be the biggest explosions, the, the biggest muscular Rambo. It's got to be the best special effects and that's the circus and then we have the others mm. or we have the the ring which is more telling the story mm. that's true so it was a little visit in into the carnival of necronomicon absolutely no it's not a circus it's a carnival i think this is what ne this is the difference exactly we have the circus we have the we the miss theater, the circus but, but we, we have the, the carnival. carnival we have okay. the sideshow <laughs> and we had we had the alligator man and the and the chicken woman yeah, absolutely thank you very much okay i think you should close this in french to um no 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 je pense no. que c'est bien de finir en anglais non, c'est bien, c'est bien. J'étais très, très content en tout cas de cette conversation. Ça nous a rappelé de bons souvenirs. Voilà, Et pour merci. mes parties, je le voyais acabar en euh... espagnol. <rire> merci à tous. <rire>